Can you imagine if someone from the Department of Energy made an announcement that by the year 2030, the U.S. would be 100% dependent on renewable energy? And not only that, but partner with Native American nations to supply the sources? Well, believe it or not, this actually happened. But if it sounds too good to be true, that's probably because it is. <laughs> See, this was just the latest elaborate prank orchestrated by the activist group, the Yes Men. On behalf of the Department of Energy, I'm very excited to announce today a great new plan. It's beginning a process that will do nothing less than convert the United States energy grid into one that's powered entirely by renewable sources. By 2030, America will produce 100% of our energy from renewables, establishing us once again as a beacon of innovation and progress and as a global leader in confronting the supreme challenge of climate change. Yes, at a meeting of the Homeland Security Congress, dozens of military contractors and lobbyists were hoodwinked into believing a fictitious new government plan called the American Renewable Clean Energy Network. Benedict Waterman, the man you just saw speaking, was actually Andy Bicklebaum of the Yes Men. And his talk was followed up by another impassioned speech from someone calling themselves Banna Slow Horse of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who was actually Gets Crazy Boy, an indigenous tar sands activist. Following these talks, Crazy Boy passed out native headbands, led the attendees of the conference into a celebratory circle dance. But if the dance wasn't hilarious enough, the contractors then lined up to gush about how excited they were about the conversion into renewables. One of the sponsors also, we're part of Northrop Grumman. Uh, we're a large business, but uh, very interested in seeing how we can support this novel cause. That's fantastic. So excited. Yeah, this is outstanding. I feel really good. It's a very emotional day. Great. Yes, that was a contractor from Northrop Grumman expressing his extreme enthusiasm for the project. But this type of stunt fits in the common tactics the Yes Men use to draw attention to political issues and social injustices. They operate under the mission statement that lies can expose truth. The Yes Men have done everything from impersonate Halliburton to the World Trade Organization, and I'm very happy to have Mike Bonanno of the Yes Men and Gets Crazy Boy join me now from New York. Amazing to have you both on. Thank you very much. Glad to be on. So, Mike, I want to start by asking you, uh, what the hell was this meeting all about, and were you surprised that someone from Northrop Grumman supported your plan for renewable energy? Well, this meeting is like many that bring together government and defense contractors to try to create uh, corporate welfare um, to support the defense industry. It's crazy. It's a place where defense contractors simply try to get money. Um, and the idea is that this is somehow involved in our security. You know, homeland security is the topic. But in reality, it's anything but concerned with our security, because if we were actually concerned about our security, we'd be dealing with things like climate change and dealing with it pro proactively, not doing what they're doing, which is simply trying to peddle weapons. Right, yeah, I mean, that's why I was surprised, I guess, to see someone from Northrop Grumman acting so excited. I mean, you weren't talking about weapons, you're talking about renewables. <laughs> well, you know, surprisingly enough, most people are not megalomaniacally insane. <laughs> Even people that work for Northrop Grumman. And if they're given the opportunity to uh, do what they actually believe in their hearts is the right thing, they go with it. It's just a few oil industry lobbyists that actually think that it's a good idea. I mean, it's not even the lobbyists. It's the oil industry that's pushing our governments to prevent us from doing what we need to do to deal with this crisis. And that is a really big crime. Uh, well said, well said. Without giving away any of your personal tactics, uh, gets Andy impersonated someone from the Department of Energy. You claim to be from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. How did you convince people that you're actually government officials? It's not too hard. I mean, <laughs> like, there's this weird romanticized view that America has on Native people. So you throw a hat on or a feather, and next thing you know, you're spending like $10,000 in Arizona for some shaman to teach you how to be a native. <laughs> so it wasn't really too hard to, to fool some people into believing I was part of the BIA. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Uh, Mike, why did you choose to draw attention to renewable energy with this stunt, and how attainable would the plan you proposed actually be? Well, the plan that it was proposed is actually based on real plans. Um, and there, there's an article in Scientific American uh, very recently 
that outlined um, converting to renewables in 13 years. Um, there are, are other plans that are out there, many other plans. And actually, 2030 is not that ambitious a, a, a number. There are entire countries right now that are on target to convert by 2020. And of course, even some very large industrialized countries are, set, are on target for 2030. So it wouldn't be that crazy for the United States to say, we've done really big things before. We could do something this big now. Right. Uh, Gitz, considering the fact that indigenous communities have been virtually ignored uh, by, by pretty much every government and that treaties have been violated for years, what was your reaction to people actually believing that this partnership was real? I mean, how out of touch are these people? <laughs> I don't know if it's really out of touch, but I mean, if you give people the, if you give, if you allow people to dream, yeah. what can come from that if they have action behind it? What could you do if you give the incentive to people? that there is a better way. And we all know that we're barreling down this, this road of you know, loss of species, climate change, you know, big catastrophic events. The weather patterns we're having right here, no one can say for sure if they're gonna be New America's pastime or if they're just gonna be something that's just quickly passing. But what was important uh, for us was just to help them realize this dream. They have the ambition. They really actually want a beautiful, healthy change for all of us. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it's important to humanize these people and realize that not, no one's uh, innately bad. I mean, if the political establishment basically said, if we do want to do this, I'm sure everyone would jump on board and say, great, let's save the planet. Uh, Mike, I want to go back and talk about some of the other things the Yes Man has done. Let's take a look at Andy Bickelbaum posing as a spokesperson for Dow Chemicals on the BBC on the anniversary of the Bhopal chemical disaster. It's 20 years since the disaster, and today I'm very very happy to announce that for the first time Dow is accepting full responsibility for the Bhopal catastrophe. We have a 12 billion dollar plan to finally at long last fully compensate the victims including the 120,000 who may need medical care for their entire lives. And to fully you know that would have been a Howard Beale moment if it only it were true and it was at the time. What prompted the yes men to take on Dow specifically? Well uh, Dow had created the largest industrial accident in history. Actually, it was Union Carbide, but Union Carbide acquired Dow. And when they acquired Dow, many people argued that they acquired their liabilities as well as their assets. But Dow claimed that in India, they didn't get any of their liabilities, that the liabilities had been settled by Union Carbide, despite the fact that there were hundreds of thousands of people who had never gotten adequate compensation. And the Bhopal plant site the site of the largest industrial accident in history had never been cleaned up. It hadn't been remediated. And now there was a second wave, another generation of children that were getting sick because of the water contamination on that site. And so we did it because we were asked actually by activists there and uh, at Greenpeace to do something about that, to try to get people to realize that it was Dow that was now responsible for that legacy. Uh, gets, you know, the Yes Man constantly targets groups that favor profitable people, uh, pranking TPP negotiations, the World Trade Organization's meeting. Uh, why go after these groups? They have some plan, they have some hand in playing all, all this, you know. There, there's some influence. Um, it also allows us opportunities like this to be sitting here in front of you to talk to you about like the massive devastation that's happening in northern Alberta with the tar sands extraction and development, the industrial development up there. You know, it allows us to say something like uh, the Wet'suwet'ens who are camping out right now, that are living right now in the heart of the Enbridge pipeline, proposed Enbridge pipeline, that are adamant about not moving, that that is their homeland willing to defend. It allows us the ability to voice these things. You know, to do an action like that or a stunt and to grab some of that uh, attention and actually redirect it in a really positive way is, is super important. That's, I believe that's why you know, we do these things. Absolutely. Mike, why does the TPP need the help of the Yes Men to be exposed? Well, the TPP is one of these crazy bureaucratic proposals that in the end is designed to privilege profit over everything else. We, we got to start fighting the World Trade Organization policies that these ne neoliberal policies that were being applied religiously across the board, no matter what impact they had on people on the ground. Um, and we started out uh, attacking that, and we continue to attack trade policies, these bureaucratic things that are very hard to understand for a layperson, but that if you look at them, 
are very dangerous and damaging to people and the environment. Absolutely. 600 plus corporate advisors, uh, negotiations constantly in secret. I'm really happy you guys did that stunt, shedding some light on this. Um, I wanted to, to take a look at probably the most absurd stunt from the Yes Men. I don't think we have time to actually play this clip, but the Halliburton survival ball, I just heard that we do have time. Let's check it out. This is the answer. This is the Halliburton survival ball. It's three easy steps for deployment, suiting up, inflating, and of course, launching. Launching out of a building, and we have an artist's rendition of what it might be like in Houston when we launch our survival balls. <laughs> Mike, I want a double question here. What was the message you were trying to convey with the creation of the ball? And I think people are so frustrated. What advice do you give to people who want to disrupt the corporatocracy? We have about a minute left. Well, the survival ball is about the absurdity of the system that we're living in and of the idea that we can survive climate change by simply fortifying our borders or creating these little bubbles that we can live in. We cannot escape this thing. We are in it together, and we have to deal with it together. And people like Gitz, who come from ground zero, the tar sands, his whole land and culture are being destroyed by this industry. And they know and they understand, and it hasn't hit us as strong yet, but it will soon. And that's what this is all about. It's all about talking about that and approaching it in a way that's funny and engaging. Absolutely, you guys. Thank you so much, Mike Bonner. Mike Bonanno, sorry, gets crazy boy from the Yes Men. Amazing to have you guys on. With Native American nations to supply the sources? Well, believe it or not, this actually happened. But if it sounds too good to be true, that's probably because it is. <laughs> See, this was just the latest elaborate prank orchestrated by the activist group, the Yes Men. On behalf of the Department of Energy, I'm very excited to announce today a great new plan. It's beginning a process that will do nothing less than convert the United States energy grid into one that's powered entirely by renewable sources. By 2030, America will produce 100% of our energy from renewables, establishing us once again as a beacon of innovation and progress. Imagine if someone from the Department of Energy made an announcement that by the year 2030, the U.S. would be 100% dependent on renewable energy. And not only that, but partner Andy Bicklebaum of the Yes Men. And his talk was followed up by another impassioned speech from someone calling themselves Banna Slow Horse of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who was actually Gets Crazy Boy, an indigenous tar sands activist. Following these talks, Crazy Boy passed out native headbands, led the attendees of the conference into a celebratory... And as a global leader in confronting the supreme challenge of climate change. Yes, at a meeting of the Homeland Security Congress, dozens of military contractors and lobbyists were hoodwinked into believing a fictitious new government plan called the American Renewable Clean Energy Network. Benedict Waterman, the man you just saw speaking, was actually...